Hey guys, it's James. We're back with another uh, dish with a more or less a year update from uh, the last time I did a Godzilla collection video. So the last one I did was a year ago and I, I just did like a quick overview of the figures I had, you know, like one second each on it. So um, basically uh, this year I thought I'd try to, you know, put more emphasis on each figure a little bit and uh, get a little more detail. So um, yeah, this is a... Uh, my Godzilla update for uh, 2017. So I have, I'm gonna do the figures, I'm gonna do some comic books I have, and I'm gonna go and do the movies I have. So um, we're gonna start off with the small figures I have. So um, yeah, these are the small figures, obviously. Um, so I'm gonna start off with the Wiz, the uh, Wiz Kids versions I have. So um, obviously, three of these are from the. Uh, 2014 Godzilla movie. So you have uh, the two uh, the two Mutos, I guess they're called. Alien, the ones that go against Godzilla. The male and the female. Like that. Like the color difference on those. These are just more like display ones. Like, you know, they're like hero click size. And uh, the 2014 Godzilla. nice design my friend got that for me this past year and uh this one my friend got for me gave it to me last year because he you know i you know i would probably appreciate it thanks jason so uh, this is uh the burning godzilla and uh you can tell it's burning because uh, you can uh ideally you can put a light to him and you see how the how he's partially transparent yep so yep those are the small ones uh now we're going to move on to uh, some. I got this one. This one's also kind of transparent, obviously. I got this for like a buck at a, one of the local comic stores. From like in those uh, little bins that you just grab out of it. Now we're going to go on to these. These I got randomly throughout comic stores and whatnot. My friend, I got this for maybe five bucks at a comic store in Syracuse. When I was there last, it's obviously uh, the 70s Mecha Godzilla. And I got this for maybe about, actually a friend of mine went to Japan. These were uh, like in the uh, gumball machines or whatever. So uh, yeah, he got this one for me. Don't really see that guy anymore, but whatever. Now we have a couple of ones that, my friend Jason got this one for me again. It was also in a comic shop, but uh, supposedly if you press, it, it worked once or twice. You press a button in the back and it does like a roar and uh, you can see the light coming out of his mouth, but the way they have it positioned and the uh, and the spine doesn't really work so well for me. It's like hard to press. And this one I also got from a comic store. It's about, it's a little posable one. It's like kind of, sort of like a mini kit you had to put together. But I got it for like 12 bucks, so I thought it was really cool. This is the uh, Godzilla from Final Wars. And... Tail moves too. Now we're gonna go to uh, I guess a, I guess I would call them the cream of my crop for the small figures. These are uh, Godzilla mini dioramas. That when I got these originally, I got them for like in a blind box for like five six bucks a piece. But they've gone up exponentially on the secondary market. So these are I'd like to get more of these, but you know they're hard to get, obviously because they've jumped in price. This is the uh, Godzilla versus Mothra, I believe. Might be Smog Monster. I think it's Godzilla versus Mothra because he's. Like, I'm probably mistaken. I'm sure someone could correct me, but you know I got this one primarily because I thought he looked kind of the way he looked at the the balls. I thought were kind of funny. I'm pretty sure this is Godzilla versus the Smog Monster, or Hedor as they call it, as he's uh has a uh, the power and uh. This one I know is Godzilla 2001, All Out Monsters Attack, King Ghidorah, Mothra. So this is where he, the 2001 emerges from the water. So yeah, um, those are my small figures. We're gonna go on to the Bandai's next and have a look around those. They're a bit, they kind of 
fluctuate within size range, but we'll try to get them in camera. Now up until a certain point, Bandai was more or less a main manufacturer for the vinyl or the lower price Godzilla figures. So, um, well, per, well, in Japan anyways, until they came to the United States in the uh, early to mid uh, 2010s. So um, I try to snatch them up as soon as I as much as I could. I don't really have all of them, but you know, I try to snatch I try to snatch them up when I could. So um, yeah, let's take a look, shall we? Uh, okay, so we're going again to the Bandai's. Uh, we're going to go, uh, this one. It's obviously the 1954 Godzilla, the first first show because he has that weird snout looking face. Like, it looks a little weird from the front. Got the bendy arms. Bendy legs. He has about me one, two, three, four, five. Six points of articulation if you count the tail. Next, we're going to go. We're going to go in order over these. Uh, this is Burning Godzilla. It's pretty much the uh, 95. The Hensei Godzilla was basically just a flaming paint job on it to make it look like he's burning. Like the eyes. I can't tell, but the eyes are a little flaming color. But, you know, I think it's... They try what they could. You know, they didn't really... They may kind of... I wouldn't say it's cheap, but it's like low price, low unpriced. And we have uh, Millennium Godzilla. Tail can't really do anything. Well, yeah, the tail doesn't really do much. But, yeah, the, they, only the arms and the legs move. It's basically there for a more dynamic pose for... Uh, the Millennium, Millennium Godzilla. And you have 2014 Godzilla. He basically has the same amount of articulation as a Millennium Godzilla. But, you know, I think the let the feet on him look a lot bigger than a movie, but it is what it, I digress. Now this one, it's about, I got this for 20 bucks, but he's... He's the final words Godzilla, but he's easily the biggest one I have. Probably like a foot or so tall, I think. He's like really big. It's like he's I think he's gone up in price, I guess. But he's got like multiple points of articulation on the tail. I think that's pretty cool. Head can turn back and forth. Hand Hands turning, legs turning, and this is the one that actually started it all for me. This is an import of the of uh, the original Bandai uh, Mecha God. I mean the two Millennium Godzilla. I got this for about forty bucks around two thousand one, two thousand two, at a local comic store in Syracuse when I was still living there. But I, you know, I it's a pretty good looking figure. I don't really do much, obviously, because I spent four. He's probably worth a bit more now, but, you know, it's a good-looking figure, good-looking design. So, yeah, those are my Bandai figures. Now we're going to get into the NECA figures, which I've, I've reviewed two of. So, but, you know, I'll probably do a couple more reviews of those. But we'll just do a mini review of those right now. So within the past three years or so, the toy company known as NECA, N-E-C-A, put as star put out Godzilla figures, and uh, they're 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 not exactly they're almost as good quality as say the uh, monster art ones, but you know they're they're obviously way lower in price. Monster arts are more imports, I guess, but you know. These also have an incredible amount of detail and a great amount of articulation. So, you know, I try, I grab these when I can get them. The only one I'm missing from this collection is uh, the 2014 one, but I'm going to get it soon. And when I do, I'm going to do an unboxing video. But let's uh, look at what I have for now. So, right now, obviously, um, this is the. 1954 Godzilla. He looks a lot better than the uh, one I have for Bandai. Obviously, he has better articulation. Obviously, if you've seen my NECA videos, you know, I've gone into the articulation, so they look pretty cool. I like how 
they keep a black and white aesthetic to it, so he's not color. You could actually put him in a black and white movie if you really wanted to. So that's that's pretty cool. We have uh, the one that's called The Return of the Godzilla from Godzilla 1984. I'm not sure I like the way his eyes look. Even in the movie, it looks like he's got kind of a dead stare to it, but you know, it's it's obviously screen accurate. I don't know what this little thing is. Might be a belly button, but take a look at him. Got that crazy tail articulation like the rest. And, you know, it, it looks like they try to, you know, more or less give it the look of the old, the, the old 1960 Godzilla's, but give him a little, make him a little more fiercer looking. Now we're going to go with the, uh, the Hesse Godzilla's from the, uh, from the mid to late, the early to mid 90s. This is a, uh, from the, 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 the package set is uh, from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, which I would love to see NECA do. I'd love to see a Space Godzilla. That'd be pretty cool. So, yep. By the way, if you want to see, like, reviews of the, any of these figures I'm doing that I haven't done, like, obviously I've done the uh, Godzilla with the breath and the Shin Godzilla, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to do a review video than any of these. And this is another burning god. This is burning Godzilla from Destroya. Um, I'm not sure. He might. Be, I think he's a uh, see-through. I think the plastic see-through on this one too. But you know, I, it, it's a better-looking dynamic than the Bandai one. Obviously, if you look at the eyes. Eyes are pretty cool. So uh, here we have the, uh, you probably saw this in a quick bit, this is a regular uh, 2001 Godzilla. If you can check out those eyes, are blank as blank as a white piece of paper. But it's, uh, it looks more like it was a combination between uh, the Hesse and the 1984 Godzilla. So we've already done uh, the, the Atomic Breath 2001 Godzilla, so I won't Going in detail on that, but if I'll put a link at the end of this video, if you want to see that. And we have Shin Godzilla. Again, I did a review of this, so I'll put another uh, link at the end of this video up for him too. If you want to see him full out. So, um, yeah. Right now, these are my NECA figures. I don't know if they have any more planned out, but I would love to see, say, the Space Godzilla. I'd love to see maybe... One of the Godzillas from the 1960s. That would be great. Um, yeah. These are these are my babies right now. I love these figures. I just love how articulated they are. And you can put them in various poses. I said that before. and uh, Yeah, so uh, that's my toy collection. So we'll go on to uh, what I have for books and whatever. Okay, so I don't have too many books or comic books from the Godzilla for concerning Godzilla. Um, I got a few IDWs that are deep in my comic book collection. I didn't really feel like looking for them for hours, but I have uh, Kingdom of Monsters and a couple other of IDW Godzilla figure. And I I even have the Godzilla vs. Barkley book from Dark Horse. Yeah, that one. But, you know, I, I have what I have. You know, they're on hand. I didn't, I didn't put these into my collection yet. I don't know why, but my friend Matt gave me a copy of uh, these comics, or gave me, I guess he got them for like 50 cents a pop. These are from the old Marvel Godzilla series, where, you know, they had Godzilla like facing the champions and other heroes from the Marvel Universe. But yep, that's all I have. And uh, I have what is called the Unauthorized Guide to Godzilla, Guide to Godzilla Collectibles. This, I got this in the early 2000s. It's dated for 1998. So, um, it's got a lot of, uh, say, a lot of artwork in there. It's, it's, it's probably more or less more imports, I guess I would say. Like, say you have... A Godzilla game down here. 
have some among other things. But you know, I I was curious to see what they had like around the world. So like there's you have like a bunch of Godzilla mugs among other things. It's a soap dish right there. So, yep. I'm gonna go on. Have basically figures and statues. Have a lot of posters in there. Let's see if I can find the Godzilla vs. Megalon. That was a hilarious poster. Yeah. Godzilla vs. Megalon taking place on top of a. This is probably was counter counter programming to the King Kong movie, obviously. So it, it goes more like from decade to decade, year to year. Um, it, it shows like a lot of the obscure stuff. Like this is from the early or the early attempts at making Godzilla figures. Um. Yeah, that's a. It's pretty much what it is. It's a. It's a list. It's like a price guide to, you know, Godzilla merchandise. And it shows like a lot of variants. Like uh, when uh, Godzilla vs. Death Destroyer got released, they did a lot of uh, variants. Then they sold that they sold basically in the theaters in Japan. This one is probably the one most people from familiar with, the uh, Shogun Warriors Godzilla. I play. I've played with that. I never had it, but I knew it was a guy who had it. So I played with that once or twice. So um, that's what I have for Godzilla books. So um, what's Godzilla without movies? So um, let's get into the movies. So obviously, I don't know of Godzilla if he wasn't a movie. So obviously, I have a bunch of Godzilla movies in my collection. Um, I don't have all of them because I wasn't really the. I'm not really the biggest fan of the 1960s. Godzilla is a good guy type of movie, so I have, I have a bunch of them regardless. Um, Godzilla movies, obviously. So we're gonna start off with uh, the original Gojira. Um, this is a uh, one they released around two thousand two thousand one, where the they released uh, the original Japanese version to U.S. audiences. It's not dubbed. It's in subtitles, but it it's more about. It's it's more about the allegory of a nuclear war and uh, effects of nuclear bombs on them. So um, yep. I'm gonna keep uh, the American versions out of the way. So uh, we're going to fast forward to 1984, Godzilla 1984, or what you call they call it Return of Godzilla, or you might know it more as Godzilla 1985, but this is uh the Japanese version where it's. They don't have Ray and Burr in it at all. It's more of a focus on, you know, the nuclear arms race and this war between the superpowers and whatnot instead of just making it a quick buck to grab. And Godzilla versus Biollante. Origi the idea behind this was uh, they after Godzilla 1984, they wanted to make a Godzilla movie. So they had a contest in Japan to to create a monster so somebody said what if we made a Godzilla out of a plant or a hybrid Godzilla out of a plant so Biollante is a uh, Godzilla faces a plant more or less with like his DNA then they kept on rolling with a all most of these blu-rays are two packs now so um got this is a weird one Godzilla versus King Ghidorah where uh, people go back in time to stop Godzilla appearing but for some reason, it doesn't affect the timeline after they, you know, make Godzilla vanish before he became Godzilla. Because they're all like, oh, when they go back to the future, it's like, oh, you got rid of Godzilla. Congratulations. Like, what? And Godzilla versus Mothra, which is basically, you know, Godzilla. Mothra is like the guardian of the earth and he's trying to defeat Godzilla. Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla 2. Because there was a. Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla back in the uh, way back in the 70s. But they they changed it around so it 
Mecha Godzilla was created by people on Earth. So he he basically got created as Top Godzilla, and you have Godzilla versus Space Godzilla, which is a uh, which results from Mothra going out into outer space at the end of the Mothra movie, and he brings some of Godzilla cells with him, which mutate with crystals in outer space to create Space Godzilla. So um, then you have Godzilla versus Desestroya, which is what the the last of the Godzilla movies in the in the uh, 1990s. Where uh, the destroyer was uh, created from a uh, the uh, oxygen destroyer from uh, the original Godzilla movie, and uh, he's uh, he and Godzilla is a uh, flaming Godzilla, the burning Godzilla, as I've had the figure show. I'm gonna get a Mega Aquarius after a uh, Godzilla 2000, where um, he's a Millennium Godzilla, obviously. So they bring this is Godzilla the Jap Japan's. Is, Response to the American Godzilla movie, which is terrible. So they, you know, they fast forward the movie and brought it back, like in nineteen ninety nine in Japan. They brought that back in two thousand, but in America, they actually released this in America, which you know I saw in the theater. I thought it was pretty cool. It has Godzilla versus an alien that you know morphs and whatnot. So let's go back to uh, Godzilla versus Mega Guerrillas, which is a film after Godzilla two thousand, where. Uh, Mankind tries to create a black hole to throw Godzilla into it, and they bring about alien, like worse aliens than than uh, him that come through. So you know, the results are always worse than the the cure. So we go on to uh, Godzilla, and Mothra, and King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack, which is the basic, which is a uh, Godzilla is. The personification of the ghosts of Japanese that died in World War Two, and they they can't get the rest. They can't get the rest, which is a different idea of the Godzilla. And uh, for once, King Ghidorah is actually a good guy, which is really weird. Besides Mothra, so um, Mothra and King Ghidorah have to stop uh, Godzilla. And you have uh, another uh, Godzilla against against Mecha Godzilla, so they want to call it Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla three. So it's another. This time they use uh, bones from the nineteen fifty four Godzilla to as a base to build the a giant exosuit around to fight Godzilla, and uh, but the bones more or less get a life of their own eventually, and they had to figure out how to stop it. Godzilla Tokyo SOS. Uh, it's another. Uh, they they figure they got the uh, kinks worked out of uh, get of the Mecha Godzilla, so you know he can fight for their side again. So um, it's using it. Uh, Mo and Mothra shows up again. So this is another you know Godzilla versus battle and uh, Godzilla versus Godzilla Final Wars. It's. An all-out monster fest where Godzilla has to f eventually fight almost every monster, including the American Godzilla, to, you know, to save the Earth. Meanwhile, there's a story of, like, mutants and aliens coming to take over the world and whatnot. And, well, it's, 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 a, it's, it's an odd movie, but, you know, it's pretty good. And uh, the last one that came out was Shin Godzilla. It's it's kind of a weird take on the Godzilla. In more, they make him more an evolving monster, and yeah, I'll I'll do another review of this down the line. But it's uh, it, it might be more of a satire take on how a uh, government responds to uh, not disasters. So um, those are the Japanese ones I have. So let's get to the American ones. Do I really need to talk about this? This is the '98 Godzilla by. Roland Emmerich and uh, Dean Devlin. Well, they decide that Godzilla isn't really a monster of destruction, but he's more a reptile that has to run and hide everywhere. While the military does all the destruction. And uh, Godzilla 2014, where uh, they more harken back to the Godzilla from the 60s and the 70s. Don't make him a bad guy really that much. He's more fighting the aliens. And he's only in the movie for like eight minutes. So it's more. Better of, them than me. 
shut it. It's more focused on uh, Aaron Aaron uh, Aaron Johnson's character than it is Godzilla. But you know, it's still pretty good. I, and I hope that, you know they they learn from it and make a better Godzilla sequel. So um, yeah, that's my Godzilla collection, guys. Um, like I said, if you want to see some figure reviews, please let me know. I mean, know what you think about this collection video. Um, I try to do these once a year. Show what I've gotten, what I, what I might lose, what I gained. So um, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next collection update. What do you say? If you're still here. Why not click here to watch another video while you're at it? Thanks, guys.